So in the previous video, we verified the credential here, and then we generated the security context. We serialized the security context into a cookie and send that cookie back to the browser, right? We could see the cookie in the browser developer tool, and it looks like this. It is encrypted. In this video, let's follow this arrow to look into what this authentication does and how it does it. So I'm already from the login page redirected back to the index page, right? So let's set a breakpoint at the get handler of the index page, right? So let's set a breakpoint right here, and then we'll see what happens. I'm gonna refresh the page, and then this is triggered. So let's watch what we have for the user. And we can see that we have one identity, which is the claims for identity. And fortunately, it is still a anonymous identity. But we have already logged in. We have successfully generated the cookie. Why on earth this primary identity is still a anonymous identity? So let's go back to our diagrams right over here. And we'll see that what is really going on here. Okay, so the browser does have the cookie. And then when the browser sends another request to the index page, right, the cookie is definitely sent to the server, right? But the fact that we still see anonymous identity, it means the server didn't look at the cookie, right? So what is responsible to look at the cookie? Okay, so that's uh, related to the, the middleware. So this is the uh, this is the browser, right? So the browser sends request into ASP.NET Core, right? What is responsible for processing the request? It's those middlewares that are hooked together, right? And the request is actually encapsulated in one object, which is the HTTP context object, right? That is the object we were looking at when we were checking, when we were watching here. So we were watching this a base dot a Based on user, right? But it's actually from the HTTP context. So if we do HTTP context, we would see uh, we would see the same thing, okay? And this user would also have the primary identity, and it still is unauthenticated, it is false, right? So we know that along these lines, the request actually is within the HTTP context. So there's got to be a middleware who's uh, going to look into the HTTP header within the HTTP context and then populate the security context with the corresponding values. So, and that middleware is our authentication middleware, right? So when the authentication middleware is looking at the HTTP request within the HTTP context, it should be able to see the header that contains the cookie and then it will interpret that cookie and after the processing it will populate the security context right the claims principle with the values translated from the cookie so that's the job for the authentication middleware to do the reason why the primary identity still is still the anonymous identity and that's because we didn't set up our authentication middleware, right? The authentication middleware is missing. That's why it's still the anonymous one. So now what we need to do is very simple. We just need to insert the authentication middleware in the pipeline. And to do that, let's go to our startup.cs file. Let's stop our debugging. And then we go to configure method and over here, uh, above this authorization middleware, you need to say use authentication, right? So this basically inserted the authentication middleware, which is responsible to call the authentication handler, right? So if we look at our I authentication service interface, uh, we can see that this authenticate async, right? We can see this is the one, right? So authenticate for the specific authentication so this one is going to be called and this method is going to be called and it's supposed to uh, be able to translate all of the cookie into the uh, security context the claims principle all right so let's see once we added this uh, what is going to happen so everything that this uh, this middleware needs is already injected 
with these four lines of code, right? So thus, uh, uh, we have injected the authentication service, which contains the cookie authentication handlers, right? and that's why it's able to convert the cookie into our claims principle because we have already injected our cookie authentication service, right? The cookie authentication handlers. All right, so let's run a debug again and see whether it's going to work this time. Okay, so let's go to our login page. Okay, we haven't set up our uh, authorization yet, so I have to manually go to our login page. Okay, so uh, we have logged in, and then uh, if we refresh that page, and then we watch the uh, this one, we could see the primary identity, and then we notice that this is authenticated property is still false. So what is going on? We have already put the middleware there. Why is not interpreting the cookie correctly? Well, we know that what is actually interpreting the cookie is the authentication handler or the service that we injected into our pipeline, right? And that is this cookie authentication service that we have already did. But we also know that um, there could be multiple authentication uh, service that are injected, right? You can use uh, multiple different cookies authentication handler with different uh, names. You can have cookie, you can have token. Although we have inserted the middleware in the pipeline, it does not know which scheme you want to use, right? The scheme name, it provides a logical grouping that groups your authentication handlers, your identities, your claims principles all together, right? You have to tell the middleware which scheme you are trying to use so that uh, the middleware is able to locate which authentication service you are trying to use to do the authentication. All right, so the way to do that is actually pretty simple. So we have to provide a authentication scheme name in here to tell the authentication middleware which authentication scheme we wanted to use to do the authentication. So it's the same name as the authentication service. It's my cookie us. So let's give that a try. All right, so we input our password. And then now we arrive at our breakpoint again. You can see the base that user contains the identity, and this time the identity the, uh, is authenticated. And we can also see the claims that we added over here, which uh, is, you know, the name is admin and the email address is admin at mywebsite.com. All right, finally, we're able to translate the cookie into our security context. Having said all of this, uh, it's actually really simple, right? The reason why I included so many details here is to really try to make you understand exactly what is happening here, that we need a middleware in order to do the authentication and the middleware uses the injected, uh, cookie authentication handler, but because there are multiple different, there could be multiple different authentication handlers, you have to specify which is the one that should be used in the middleware, right? By specifying the name here, right? You can add multiple of these, but you, there can be only one that is used to do the authentication and you just have to specify the name. In this case, we only have one, right? So all of these names are the same, including the name in here, right? For the identities, uh, and for sending the cookie. All right, so that's everything in this video. I'll see you in the next one.